Welcome to this Click Explains Finance video. This week, a fairly topical one, what General Electric's, or GE's as it's known, Dow Jones demotion, which happened quite recently, tells equity investors. Okay, so what's happened here? For those people who missed it, General Electric is one of America's oldest and largest companies. At certain times, it has been America's largest company by market capitalization, not anymore. And it was removed from the Dow Jones 30 index during the most recent review to be replaced by Walgreen Boots. Now this matters because, as we'll see in a moment, GE has been one of the most long established members of one of America's oldest indices. So this is a big company and it's big news. All right? And the reason was its share price failed to keep it in the club. And that's something we'll come back to in a moment. Its share price fell far enough that they thought we're going to boot it out on the basis of the top 30 companies. Now, GE is one of the founding members of the original Dow Jones Index in 1896, so this is quite big news. We've lost one of the industrial behemoths from one of the top indices, if you like. Been a member continuously since 1907. You can see the facts, facts there. The share price, when it was kicked out of around $12.95, means that on a share price alone basis, it didn't cut the mustard in terms of making the top 30. And yet, you might be saying, well, that's, you know, you're not a member of the club. Tough. Clubs have rules, this one has rules, you don't meet them. But actually, on a market capitalization basis, a size basis, 113 billion is still fairly punchy, as we'll see in a moment. So maybe this says as much about the index that the company left as it does about the company. So, why did this happen? I mean, strictly speaking, why did it happen? So most indices, such as the S&P 500, that's the big American index, 500 top companies using market capitalization as the basis for inclusion or exclusion, and our FTSE 100 are based around value or size. That's the point. The list of qualifying firms is a function of their size. So the ranking is not share price alone. It's share price times number of shares in issue to give a, an equity value, if you like. And on that basis, G remains a pretty key player, albeit a sort of fallen angel, if you like. So the S&P, at the time this video is being shot, so June 2018, ranked around 44th. So still quite a big player. But expulsion from the Dow Jones 30 makes it sound like it's in all sorts of trouble. I'll come back to that point in just a moment. So Dow Jones, on the other hand, is a rare example. These are quite difficult to find these days of an index based around share price alone. So the ranking criteria, where they cut off the top 30, if you like, is just share price. And here's the thing. So yes, other members, other remaining members of that group, like Goldman Sachs, like Apple, have much higher share prices. So on that basis, they stay in the club. GE doesn't at $12.95, let's say. But GE's market capitalization of 113 billion is big enough to rank it above both Caterpillar and United Technologies, both still members of the club. So that's a bit weird. Now, why this matters? Well, essentially, professional investors know this already, or most of them do. So they tend to discount this kind of news. So what I mean by that is um, institutions don't generally follow the Dow Jones. All right, and there's the stats to prove it on the slide there because of its structural quirks, which go back you know, to, to, to the last century, or actually the last two centuries, if you like, in terms of its construction. So GE only reacted by dropping around 1.5%. Walgreen Boots only rose when it joined this illustrious club by around 4 to 5%. So share price movement surprisingly small, you might say, for such a high-profile event. And that's basically because... If you look at what you know, tracks these indices, the, the wall of money tracking indices, you've got around $30 billion tracking the Dow Jones versus, you can just about see it there, I've almost scribbled over it, 9.9 .9 trillion, the S&P 500. So far more money tracks the S&P 500. And that's why the share price didn't react perhaps as much as some people might have expected. So how does that help you? Well, be careful. Because for the rest of us, non-institutional investors, if I'm not pension funds, life insurance companies and so on, with armies of analysts and clever people, the Dow Jones is heavily quoted, heavily publicised. It's all over the media. If the market drops, Dow Jones plunges, crashes, falls, you see all that kind of stuff going on. So the danger is that investors place an undue weighting and might even do something silly. So you know, investors might start bailing out of companies just because they slip out of the top 30 club. And actually, you've got to ask the question, how representative is that club of anything at all in some respects. All right, so just be a little bit careful because the Dow Jones is arguably, one, a little bit out of date in terms of the way it's constructed using share price, not market capitalization. All right, and it's relatively small. It only looks in a sort of artificial way at the top 30 companies, whereas other indices like the S&P 500, the Wiltshire, our FTSE, for example, look at a much broader basket. So overall conclusions then, on the one hand, yes, 
GE was booted out because it's not the powerhouse that it used to be. It's not the industrial benchmark, if you like, that it used to be. Um, it's had a number of issues. I mean, you can't discount these. It's had a downturn in demand for gas-fired power plants, oil filled services, and some legacy issues from the insurance arm, share price taking a battering, dividend has suffered over the last few years as well. Um, it's a reflection for some people of what America used to be, not so much what it is now. But that notwithstanding, all right, a stock index, I would say, should reflect the value of the largest firms in the economy. All right? And I think people, therefore, the danger is people put too much of a weighting on whether companies join this club, top 30 club or leave this top 30 club to ask what that club actually represents. So GE hadn't fallen behind some of its peer group that remained in the index in value terms. All right? And therefore, investors need to be a little bit wary about the informational importance they place on the Dow Jones, even if it's splashed across the media at the time something like this happens. So, takeaway from this one is this particular case says at least as much about the index, the club, if you like, as it does about the company that was leaving it. To email me, um, editor at killick.com, and to watch videos related to this one, do go to killick.com forward slash learn and click the shares tab.